We're going to look at specifically now integrals that have a quadratic denominator and another way we could approach these. I mean, we, we saw partial fractions and that's one way we could handle it. Here's another way. So, if it can be written as the difference of two squares, so a squared minus x squared or x squared minus a squared, we could, of course, factorise these and do it via pa partial fractions. Um, you're better off just memorising these. They are the missing standard in integrals, if you like. I don't know why they don't put them on the standard integral sheet. They should be there. Uh, I'll talk more about these in particular in a little while. These other ones are, of course, on the standard integral sheet. You've got the sum of two squares. Um, so then we know that's inverse tan. And then we have the quadratic denominators that are under square root signs. And so difference of two squares where the constant is first, we know is inverse sine or negative inverse cos. The uh, square root of x squared minus a squared, it is on our standard integral sheet, log of x plus the square root of x squared minus a squared. And a squared plus x squared under the square root, you see, is a very similar expression. Basically, it's log of x plus, and you'll, you match the square root sign, basically. You know this. So they are the six different quadratic denominators. So right, here we are, x squared plus 4x plus 9. It doesn't actually factorise nicely uh, as far as partial fractions go, because what multiplies together give 9, adds together give 4. No, nah, can't really do that. So we complete the square on the bottom. So remember when we complete the square, you'll always end up with x plus half the coefficient of x, all squared. So we have x plus 2 all squared, but when we expand that out, we don't get 9. We would get 4, so I need to add 5. So I have the sum of two squares in this case, where the first square is x plus 2 and the second square is root 5 squared. Sum of two squares, well that was inverse 10. So we have 5, because of the constant on the top. Remember with inverse 10 it's 1 over a. a in this case is root 5. Inverse 10, x on a, but in this case it's x plus 2 rather than x. Um, and then 5 tidies up with the root 5, just to get root 5 times inverse 10. Okay. Now, here's one where we have the square root. And we also have 3x plus 2 on the top. If it's not just a constant on the top, I break it up into two integrals. And on the first integral, I create the derivative of the quadratic. And so you see the quadratic here is x squared minus 4x plus 1. So on the top, I simply write the derivative. 2x minus 4. But I can't change the question. I didn't have 2x, I had 3x. So to balance the x's out, I multiply by 3 on 2. But of course, that's now changed my constant. 3 on 2 times negative 4 does not give 2. 3 on 2 times negative 4 gives us negative 6. So to get back to 2, that's where the second integral comes in handy, we add 8. So we end up with two integrals, one where we create the derivative on top, and the second one is basically balancing the constant out. Okay, now, because I now have derivative on function, or square root of function, that's how I've deliberately set up, what I really have is du on root u. Remember that common one I said will come up a lot? So I know the answer to that is 2 root u. In this case, u being x squared minus 4x plus 1. The second one... I'm going to have to complete the square. So, all right, you don't physically have to do the substitution. Remember, if you just remember the du on root u is 2 root u, you can go straight to the answer. But effectively, that's what I'm doing. I'm saying u equals x squared minus 4x plus 1. Du is 2x minus 4, just for the first integral. The second integral, I complete the square. Um, so it becomes x minus 2 all squared. But when I expand that out, I get plus 4. I want plus 1. So it's minus 3. So the standard integral I want for the second one is the square root of x squared minus a squared, a in this case being root 3. All right, du on root u goes to 2 root u. And 8, the constant out the front, log of x match the square root sign. Notice I put expanded out into its original form rather than leaving it as x minus 2 or squared minus 3. I think it looks a, a little bit neater. Uh, now, of course, all I've got to do is substitute back into the, uh, the u. 
the twos cancel, and I have my final answer, 3 root x squared minus 4x plus 1 plus 8, the log of x minus 2 plus the square root of x squared minus 4x plus 1. Isn't that beautiful? See, now we get some really nice things. Let's have a look at this one. And you thought, well, hang on, why on earth is this in quadratics? There is no quadratic there. But I can create a quadratic. And I'm going to rationalise, not the denominator, but the numerator. So if I multiply by root x plus 3 on x plus 3, the top just becomes x plus 3, the bottom becomes the square root of a quadratic. And I know how to handle this. Ah, okay, linear function on top, I will split this into two integrals. The first integral, I will create the derivative. The derivative will be minus 2x minus 1, so I then end up with du on root u, which will be 2 root u. But I've got to balance it out. I had x, I've made it minus 2x, so to balance that out, I've got to multiply by minus a half. Now let's fix up the constant. Uh, minus a half times minus 1 is positive a half. I want positive 3, so I need to add 5 on 2. Don't know why I put 5 in the integral and the, the 1 on half out the front. I could have just put 5 on 2 out the front of the integral. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so there it goes. We've got it again. du on root u, the second one I'll need to complete the square on. When you're completing this, be very careful because it's minus x squared. So you know you're going to need minus a perfect square. If you put the minus sign in the uh, parentheses, then when you square it, it's going to become a positive x squared. So that's why I needed the minus out the front. So be very careful with your constants then because it's going to be now plus a half, even though the coefficient is minus x, because again, I'm going to go minus when I expand out. So that's plus a half. That'll become the constant now is minus one quarter. So to get to six, I need to add 25 on four, which, as I say, was our inverse sine function. Uh, so there we go. There's our two root u again. So minus half times the two root u, five on two inverse sine. Well, we can make that look a little bit neater. Um, so that's two x plus one on five, the inverse sine of. All right, let's talk a bit more about those two missing standard integrals and how to memorise them, I guess, the easy way of memorising them, because they are very similar. So as the dx, the difference of two squares, a squared minus x squared. Now, basically, this is how my mind works. Sometimes it can be a frightening thing. Okay, if I look at it, the integrand, by the way, the integrand is what you integrate. That's called an integrand. The integrand finishes with the x. So the primitive, primitive function, when you integrate, you get primitive function. So the primitive finishes with a minus x. Okay. So if the integrand finishes with the x, then my standard integral finishes on the bottom with the, the, the x. The other one is when the x comes first, difference of two squares. So if it begins with the x, then it will start with the x minus a. So the x minus a goes on top. So that's how I tend to remember. I know the 1 on 2a log is the same in both of them. Uh, I just look for what's happening with the difference of two squares. If it's minus x squared, then I know I want to finish the fraction on the bottom with a minus x, so therefore a plus x is on top. If it begins with x, then I'll begin writing my fraction with x, so I'll begin with x minus a, so x plus a must be on the bottom. That's, that. that's just how this mind works. Alrighty, another handful of integrals to play with.